Meanwhile, violence in the occupied West Bank, including East Jerusalem, con meanwhile, violence in the occupied West Bank, including East Jerusalem, continued at alarming levels. 159 Palestinians, including two women and 43 children, were killed by Israeli security forces during search and arrest operations, armed exchanges, airstrikes, demonstrations, and other incidents. One Palestinian was killed by Israeli settlers, and another was killed either by Israeli forces or by settlers. A total of 1,150 Palestinians were injured, including 240 by tear gas in the legions and 394 by live ammunition. According to Israeli sources, 10 Israelis, including two women, one child, and three security forces personnel were killed and another 74 were injured by Palestinians in shooting, stabbing and ramming attacks, and rocket and Molotov cocktails throwing, and other incidents. Israeli security forces carried out 1,937 search and arrest operations in the occupied West Bank, resulting in 2,119 Palestinians detained, including at least 72 children. Israel currently holds at least 3,558 Palestinians in administrative detention. The high number of fatal incidents during the reporting period precludes me from detailing all, but allow me to highlight a few. Most Palestinians were killed by ISF in the context of Israeli operations in Area A, including during subsequent exchanges with armed Palestinians marked by the use of increasingly lethal weaponry. Incidents include six Palestinians, um, including a 14-year-old killed on 8 December in Al-Fara refugee camps in Tubas. Eleven more, including three children killed during a three-day Israeli operation and ensuing armed clashes from 12 to 14 December in Jenin. And four Palestinians, including two children, were killed in Tulkoran refugee camp with five other killed in Nablus Palat, a refugee camp, on 17 January. On 30 January, inside a hospital in Jenin, ISF killed three Palestinians. One of them was a patient. The IDF said that the, the three were planning an attack against the Israelis. On 4 March, a 16-year-old was killed in the Al Amari refugee camp in the largest Israeli operations in and around Ramallah for years. Settler-related violence continued, including several attacks recorded in the Jordan Valley, where hurting communities are at risk of displacement. On 28 January, Israeli authorities extended the administrative detention of a prominent settler by three months. Violence against Israelis by Palestinians also continued in shooting attacks in the occupied West Bank, including East Jerusalem and in Israel. Three Israelis were killed near Ashdod on 16 February. Another was killed on 22 February near Maladumim settlement in the shooting attacks on cars. And on 29 February, two others, including a 16-year-old, were killed near the Eli settlement. Despite some restrictions on 15 March, thousands of Muslim worshippers participated in Friday Ramadan prayer in Jerusalem's old city with minimal confrontations. Mr. President, Security Council Resolution 2334 calls for the parties to refrain from acts of provocation, incitements, and inflammatory rhetoric. Nevertheless, such acts continued. Marking 100 days since the 7 October attack, a senior Hamas official celebrated and vowed to repeat the event, calling it quote, a scaled-down model of the final war of liberation, unquote. Ahead of the start of Ramadan, Hamas also called on the Palestinians in the occupied West Bank, including East Jerusalem, to escalate confrontations with Israel. A number of Israeli officials called for the, quote, voluntary migration of Palestinians from Gaza and the re-establishment of settlements there, with a minister posting on social media that Israel, quote, should compel them until they say they want it, continue to pressure them using force, starvation, and difficult conditions, unquote. An Israeli member of Knesset called on Israel 
quote, to occupy, to annex, to destroy all the houses in Gaza, to build large and spacious neighborhoods, large settlements, unquote. Mr. President, Resolution 2334 reiterate calls to, uh, by the Middle East Quartet for affirmative steps to be taken immediately. Negative trends on the ground that are imperiling the two state solution. Negative trends continued. In Gaza, the humanitarian impact of the hostilities have been cataclysmic and is worsening daily. Nearly 1.7 million people have been displaced, with already been reported. Most people have no access to adequate food, clean drinking water, or effective sanitation services amid a disseminated health system. The levels of humanitarian access of, and safety of humanitarian workers remain alarming, negatively impacting the humanitarian response alongside operational constraints and pipeline limitations. Near daily Israeli denials of de and delays of coordination of movement, including detention of humanitarian workers and ineffective deconflicting mechanisms and the lack of approval of adequate communication equipment and armed vehicles, makes humanitarian work extremely dangerous. Eight convoys continue to face attacks, damaged roads and unruly mobs amid a security vacuum. Some progress was made on the first, with the first shipment arriving on 15 March, alongside opening of an access point in the north of Gaza. On 29 December 2023, the Republic of South Africa instituted proceedings against Israel before the International Court of Justice concerning alleged violation in the Gaza Strip of Israel's obligations under the Convention of Prevention of the Punishment of the Crime of Genocide. On 26 January, the ICJ indicated provisional measures in the case. On 29 January, Palestinian Prime Minister Steyer announced the government reform program centered on improving accountability, reducing deficit, enhancing revenue and upgrading services. Following Prime Minister Steyer's resignation, President Abbas announced Mohammed Mustafa Prime Minister designate on 14 March. On 29 February, per an arrangement agreed to between Norway, Israel and Palestinian Authority, the PA started to receive the clearance revenue that Israel collects on its behalf. The revenues exclude an amount Israel says the PA transferred to Gaza, which the parties agree would be held in trust fund in Norway. The fiscal situation of the PA nevertheless remains extremely precarious with soaring unemployment and poverty rates in the context of increased movement restrictions. Intra-Palestinian discussions took place in Moscow on the 1st and the 2nd of March. During the reporting period, Israel provided information alleging 12 UNRWA staff were involved in the 7 October attacks. The employment contracts of the active staff members were terminated and the Secretary General immediately activated an internal investigation which has delivered an interim report. He also appointed an independent review group which visited Israel and Palestine in March to assess whether the agency is doing everything within its power to ensure neutrality and to respond to allegations of serious breaches. Mr. President, Resolution 2334, the Security Council called upon all states to distinguish in the relevant dealings between the territory of State of Israel and the territories occupied since 1967. On 7 March, the Norwegian government issued a statement outlining that, quote, Norwegian business should be aware that through economic or financial activities in Israeli settlements that violate international law, they risk contributing to violations of international humanitarian law or human rights, unquote. Resolution 2334 also opened uh, called upon all parties to continue inter alia to exert collective efforts to launch credible negotiations. 
in the context of the current hostilities in Gaza, intense negotiations between international mediators and the parties continued to formulate a deal for the release of the hostages and a ceasefire. On 1st of February, the U.S. issued an executive order imposing sanctions on persons undermining peace, security, and stability at the West Bank. Additional sanctions on two outposts and settlers were announced on 14 March. In total, seven set Israeli settlers have been sanctioned under the order. The UK, France, and New Zealand also subsequently announced sanctions against settlers. On 23 February, reverting to U.S. policies announced in December 2016, the U.S. Secretary of State stated that the U.S. views, views Israeli settlement as, quote, inconsistent with international law, unquote. On 4 March, the U.N. Special Representative of the Secretary General on Sexual Violence in Conflict released findings that there are reasonably grounds to believe that conflict-related sexual violence occurred in multiple locations during the 7 October attacks in Israel, and that there was clear and convincing information that sexual violence has been committed against hostages and reasonably ground to believe that such violence may be ongoing against those still in captivity. While the scope of the visit in the occupied West Bank did not include verification, the special representative stated that she received information about various forms of sexual violence, as well as sexual harassment and threats of rape against Palestinian men and women in detention settings, during house raids, and at checkpoints in the West Bank. Mr. President, in closing, allow me to share the Secretary General's observations on the implementation of Security Council Resolution 2334. One, I once again condemn the horrific armed attacks by Hamas and other groups on 7 October. Nothing can justify these acts of terror. The remaining hostages must be released immediately and unconditionally. While in captivity, hostages must be treated humanely and allowed to receive visits and assistance from the Red Cross. I'm horrified by the finding of SRST pattern regarding the use of sexual violence during the 7 October attacks and sexual be ongoing. All perpetrators of such acts must be fully prosecuted and held to account. As hostilities continue, I reiterate there is no justification for acts of terror that were committed and the deliberate killing, maiming, and abduction of civilians and other protected personnel and using sexual violence against them. The use of human skills and the firing of indiscriminately in people. I am concerned over the, what may be violation of international humanitarian law, including possible non-compliance with the requirements of distinction, proportionality, and precautions in attacks. I reiterate that ordering the massive displacement of the population in Gaza without ensuring the basic humanitarian needs can be met raises serious concerns about compliance with the applicable legal requirements. The entry of humanitarian supplies has been far below what is required. Hospitals must be respected and protected by all parties and should never become battleground. International humanitarian law cannot be applied selectively. It applies to all parties to a conflict at all times. The obligations to comply with it does not depend on reciprocity. I mourn the UN staff killed in Gaza. Their courage and dedications will not be forgotten. The inviolability of UN premises must be respected at all times. The life-threatening conditions facing the more than 1.7 million internally displaced persons within an ever-diminishing space in Gaza must be addressed immediately. I'm extremely concerned by the possible nightmare of more than 1 million people being displaced 
uh, again if Israel proceeds with its planned ground operations in Rafah. The world's leading experts on food insecurity also clearly document that famine in the northern part of Gaza is imminent. Palestinians in Gaza are enduring horrific suffering. I call on Israel to fulfill its obligation under international law, including allowing uh, and facilitating the rapid and unimpeded humanitarian access into and throughout Gaza. The UN and humanitarian partners must be able to deliver assistance safely. This means that humanitarian locations, movements and workers must be protected more effectively and that the UN be allowed the equipment it needs to increase staff safety. I welcome the opening of a maritime corridor to deliver much needed additional humanitarian assistance by sea, but reiterate that for, that for, for aid delivery at scale, any full substitute to delivery by land. I reiterate my call for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire and urge all sides to redouble efforts to reach an agreement that will bring about needed humanitarian ceasefire and the release of all hostages. I'm engaged tireless uh, with all stakeholders towards these objectives and stand ready to support the impl implementation of an agreement. I welcome the effort, including by Egypt, Qatar and the US, to reach a deal. I am deeply concerned leading to rising levels of casualties and disseminating many West Bank refugee camps. Security forces must exercise maximum restraints and use lethal forces only when it's strictly unavoidable to protect life. I call on Israel to abide by its obligation under international law, including with regard to proportionality use of force and, the, and ensure thorough, independent, and prompt investigations into all instances of possible excessive use of force, holding those responsible to account. I'm alarmed by the attacks carried out by Israeli settlers against Palestine acts or threats or violence. Acts or threats or violence. I note the measures announced by several council members and other states against extremist settlers members and other states against extremist settlers. Attacks by Palestinians against Israelis must also cease. All perpetrators must be held accountable. In the spirit of this holy month of Ramadan, I reiterate the utmost need to uphold the status quo at the holy sites in Jerusalem, taking into account the special road bank, including East Jerusalem. The ever-expanding settlement footprint, including outposts, further entrenches the occupation while severely impeding the exercise by Palestinian people of its rights to self-determination. I reiterate that all Israeli settlements in the occupied West Bank, including East Jerusalem, have no legal validity and are in flagrant violation of international law. The demolition and seizure of Palestinian structures, including internationally funded humanitarian projects, entail numerous human rights violations and raise concerns about the risk of forcible transfer. I call upon the government of Israel to end this practice in line with the international obligations and to allow Palestinian communities to build and address the development needs. I am disturbed by the multiple instances in which officials have engaged in dangerous provocations, incitements, and inflammatory language, which must be rejected by all. I am encouraged by steps taken by the Palestinian Authority, demonstrating its readiness to reform, and welcomes the implementation of the arrangement facilitated by Norway and agreed by Israel and PA that enabled revenue transfers to the PA. However, the Palestinian economy and fiscal situation remains in crisis, putting PA at existential risk. I urge the international community to extend immediate fiscal relief to the PA and for the PA to continue carrying out crucial reforms. 
I was appalled by the allegation that 12 UNRWA staff were involved in the 7 October attacks. These are being thoroughly and independently investigated while a review on UNRWA's neutrality is also ongoing. I underscore that UNRWA remains the backbone of UN humanitarian response in Gaza. The agency remains indispensable and irreplaceable, a lifeline for millions of Palestinian refugees and critical for regional stability. I welcome the resumptions of funding by some donors and continue to call on donors to resume funding as the continuity of UNRWA operations must be guaranteed. The enormity of the humanitarian security and political challenges we are faced with requires a collective, creative and immediate response. We must urgently address the catastrophic humanitarian situation in Gaza. I regret that despite intensive diplomatic efforts, we have not seen an agreement on a ceasefire and the release of hostages. It is also important to support efforts to strengthen the PA to enable it to effectively govern across the whole of the OPT. Ultimately, any substantial solution for Gaza and the broader Israeli-Palestinian conflict is political. It is imperative to set the condition for an agreed political framework that can outline tang tangible, irreversible steps towards ending the occupation and establishing a two-state solution, Israel and Palestine, of which Gaza is an integral part, living side by side in peace and security, on the basis of UN resolutions, previous agreements and international law, with Jerusalem as the capital of both states. Thank you. I thank Mr. Winnesland for his briefing. I now give the floor to those council members who wish to make statements. I give the floor to the representative of the United States. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you for your briefing, Special Coordinator Wendlin. Yesterday, we abstained on a UN Security Council resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza until the end of Ramadan and the release of all hostages. We have been clear and consistent and our support for a ceasefire as part of the hostage deal. Because the final text did not have key language we think is essential, like a condemnation of Hamas, we could not support it. However, because it fairly reflects our view that a ceasefire and the release of hostages come together, we abstained. As you know, the United States is engaged in an on-the-ground effort, along with Egypt and Qatar, to secure a hostage release in the context of a ceasefire. These and other steps detailed in the U.S. resolution last week are all things we believe the Security Council should have been able to get behind. We regret that Russia and China instead chose to cynically obstruct the Council's action. We also regret that yesterday's E-10 resolution failed to condemn Hamas's terrorist attack on October 7 and its sexual violence. There is no excuse, let me repeat, no excuse for the Security Council's failure to condemn Hamas's terrorism. This Council needs to condemn Hamas. As we all know, and several Council members highlighted yesterday in their remarks, a resolution is but one step toward a ceasefire and the release of hostages. To achieve these goals, we need diplomacy on the ground. The United States continues to work with Egypt, Gutter and Israel. As Secretary Blinken has stated, there is a strong proposal on the table. We should all be pressing Hamas to agree to this deal without delay. The United States also continues to work to surge humanitarian assistance into Gaza because not enough assistance is reaching civilians in need. The reality is that children are starving to death in Gaza because humanitarian assistance can't reach them. Children should not be dying of malnutrition in Gaza, or anywhere else for that matter. 100% of the population of Gaza is experiencing severe levels of acute food insecurity. While the ceasefire we are working towards would be the best, most immediate way to surge humanitarian assistance, it is not the only way. 
We continue to coordinate international efforts to establish a maritime corridor, and that includes support for the U.S. military mission to construct a temporary pier as an additional channel for aid. We also continue to airdrop assistance into Gaza. This maritime corridor and airdrops are additive and not a substitute for essential land access needed into and throughout Gaza to respond to the imminent famine. Senior Coordinator Cog has briefed the Security Council on a detailed plan for expanding the flow of aid. The U.S. drafted resolution expressed the Council's support for this plan and would have further strength strengthened Senior Coordinator Cog's mandate to implement that plan. Russia's and China's cynical veto of the resolution, therefore, only served to undercut the UN's efforts on the ground. But we nonetheless remain hopeful that the Security Council can find a way to endorse Senior Coordinator Cog's efforts and strengthen her mandate. Colleagues, we continue to advise the Israeli government against a major ground operation into Rafah. We share Israel's goal of defeating Hamas, which is responsible for the worst massacre of the Jewish people since the Holocaust, and we share the goal of ensuring Israel's long-term security. As we have said, though, a major military ground operation in Rafah is not the way to do it. It risks killing more civilians. It risks wreaking greater havoc with the provision of humanitarian assistance. And so our advice to Israel is, there is a better way. That is a message that President Biden, Secretary Blinken, Secretary Austin, and Ambassador Thomas Greenfield all have communicated to senior Israeli officials in recent weeks, and we will continue to emphasize. Finally, we reiterate our support for long-term peace and security in Israel and in Gaza. As Secretary Blinken has said, Gaza cannot be used as a platform for terrorism. There can be no displacement of its population. There can be no reduction in its territory or reoccupation by Israel. And we agree that this requires a path to two states with real security guarantees for Israel. This, however, also requires real reform of the Palestinian Authority. And although we have seen some initial steps in that direction, more is needed. Revitalizing the PA with a better, more representative government, including Palestinians from Gaza, is critical to achieving the vision of Gaza unified with the West Bank under the Palestinian Authority. Colleagues, the United States continues to work on each of these aspects directly in the region with Israel and with regional partners. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of the United States for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of the United Kingdom. Thank you, President. And I thank Special Coordinator Wenersland for his comprehensive briefing today. Israel continues to deal with the brutal horror and the aftermath of the October 7 attacks. And Hamas continues to hold innocent hostages in Gaza. The UK condemns these attacks unequivocally. Israel has a right to defend itself and ensure such an attack can never happen again. At the same time, Innocent Palestinians are facing unfathomable human suffering in Gaza. The latest IPC report stated that there is an imminent risk of famine. Disease is on the rise. A devastating humanitarian crisis is worsening day by day. The UK agrees with the recommendations in the IPC report. President, I wish to make three points. First, the UK has long been calling for an immediate humanitarian pause in fighting to get aid in and hostages out and leading to a sustainable ceasefire. Yesterday's adoption of Resolution 2728 delivered just that. We now need to see its full implementation. We welcome the ongoing negotiations led by Qatar, Egypt, and the US to this end. And we reiterate our call on Hamas to immediately and unconditionally release all hostages. Second, 
Israel needs to ensure significantly more life-saving aid can reach those in need in Gaza. This includes opening Ashdod port and Kerem Shalom in full and to their maximum operating capacity, issuing visas to UN workers and aid agencies, and ensuring effective deconfliction to guarantee the safety of aid convoys. The Foreign Secretary and Prime Minister have reiterated these messages to Prime Minister Netanyahu and other senior Israeli political leaders in recent weeks. The UK has trebled our aid commitment this financial year, and we will keep doing everything we can to get more aid in by land, sea and air to reach those in desperate need in Gaza. We're also deeply concerned to hear reports that Israel has blocked UNRWA's access to northern Gaza. We call on Israel to ensure urgently that the UN can deliver food aid immediately to those living in the north, many of whom are at greatest risk of starvation. Third, we're alarmed by the continued expansion of settlements and unprecedented levels of settler violence in the West Bank, including the most on how we chart the way towards a sustainable peace without a return to fighting. That means removing Hamas capacity to launch attacks against Israel, Hamas no longer being in charge of Gaza, the formation of a new Palestinian government for the West Bank and Gaza, accompanied by an international support package, and a political horizon which provides a credible and irreversible pathway towards a two-state solution, with Israel and Palestine living side by side in security and peace. I thank you, President. <coughs> I thank the representative of the United Kingdom for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of Guyana. Mr. President, thank you for convening today's meeting on the implementation of Security Council Resolution 2334 of 2016. My appreciation also to Special Coordinator Wenisland for his insightful briefing and the presentation of the Secretary General's report. We have heard this morning yet another update of the tragic circumstances to which Palestinians, both in Jerusalem, are subject by the occupying power through deliberate, illegal, and sustained policies and practices. These policies and practices persist despite numerous injunctions by this Council and the General Assembly, and in contravention of obligations arising from the State of Israel's ratification of several international legal instruments, including the Fourth Geneva Convention relative to the protection of civilians in time of war. Consequently, the full implementation of Resolution 2334 continues to be seriously impeded. Allow me briefly to dwell on three provisions of the resolution which Guyana views as especially critical in the broader context of achieving the two-state solution. First, Guyana has taken note of ongoing settle settlement expansion in the occupied Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem. This expansion is accompanied by violence resulting in harm to Palestinian civilians and destruction of their homes and property. Several senior Israeli government officials have endorsed these activities, thus emboldening the perpetrators of these illegalities. The recent observation by the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights that the drastic acceleration in settlement building is exacerbating long-standing patterns of oppression, violence, and discrimination against Palestinians, and that the policies of the current Israeli government appear aligned to intent with the goals of the Israeli settlement, settler movement to expand long-term control over the West Bank and to steadily integrate this occupied territory in the state of Israel mirrors the concern of many, including Guyana. Guyana reiterates that the establishment of Israeli settlements in the Palestinian territory occupied since 1967 has no legal validity 
and is a major obstacle to the two-state solution. Guyana further appeals to the State of Israel to abide by its international obligations in this respect. Second, Guyana recalls that Resolution 2334 calls for steps to prevent violence against civilians and calls for accountability in this regard. The heinous events of 7th October and this equally heinous response have set off a humanitarian tragedy of unproportions in the Gaza Strip. The Strip has been decimated. More than 32,000 Palestinians have been killed. Hundreds of thousands are starving, severely undernourished, and on the brink of famine. Women are ch and children are bearing the brunt of this disaster. Yesterday, the Council issued a demand for a ceasefire, but from all indications, this is not being adhered to. Accountability remains sorely lacking in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, and perhaps is the reason crime after crime is committed year after year with seeming impunity. Guyana appeals for the unity of this council to ensure accountability for crimes against civilians. There is no hierarchy of member states in this organization. All are obligated to uphold the principles and purposes of the United Nations as contained in the Charter. Finally, Mr. President, the Middle East peace process needs impetus so that the final status issues can be resolved. The Palestinian question must be brought to a definitive and swift end, resulting in a free and independent state of Palestine. The two-state solution is under serious threat, and what should concern us is that the threat is not veiled. It is being broadcast internationally. The prevailing circumstances in the occupying territory and the accompanying international attention to the situation present a unique window of opportunity for this Council to make concerted efforts to advance the two-state solution in line with the relevant UN resolutions. The admission of the State of Palestine as a full member of the United Nations is a first and critical step in this direction. Please count on Guyana's full and constructive support for a comprehensive resolution of the Palestinian question. I thank you. I thank the representative of Guyana for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of France. Monsieur le Président, Mr. President, je remercie Monsieur I thank Mr. Venezland for his expose. Le Conseil de sécurité a exigé hier un cessez-le-feu immédiat à Gaza en adoptant la résolution 2728. Il a aussi demandé la libération immédiate et inconditionnelle des otages détenus par le Hamas et d'autres groupes terroristes. Cette résolution doit être adoptée, partout, appliquée par tous comme le prévoit l'article 25 de la Charte. Je rappelle notre condamnation des attaques terroristes du 7 octobre. La situation humanitaire à Gaza est catastrophique. Il y a urgence à garantir une entrée massive d'aide face au risque imminent de famine. Israël doit ouvrir sans délai et sans condition tous les points de passage terrestres existants. Pendant ce temps, la colonisation israélienne se poursuit et même s'accélère en Cisjordanie. La France condamne cette politique contraire au droit international. Elle ne reconnaîtra jamais l'annexion illégale de territoires ni la légalisation de, de colonies sauvages. La décision israélienne du 22 mars confisquant 800 hectares de terrain en Cisjordanie est inacceptable. Il s'agit de la plus importante confiscation de terre par Israël dans les territoires palestiniens occupés depuis les accords d'Oslo. La France déplore également France les déplacements forcés de communautés palestiniennes, conséquence des attaques répétées des colons. Les violences qu'ils commettent doivent cesser et leurs crimes ne doivent pas rester impunis. Comme l'a indiqué dimanche le président de la République, Emmanuel Macron, au premier ministre israélien, des premières mesures ont été prises à titre national. La France envisage d'autres mesures en concertation avec ses partenaires. La France et l'Union européenne ne reconnaissent pas de souveraineté israélienne sur les zones qui sont passées sous l'administration d'Israël après 
fait le 5 juin 1967. France prévoit tangiblement avec ses partenaires qui portent sur leurs respectifs la résolution 2334, la politique de différenciation vise ainsi à matérialiser la distinction juridique entre le territoire d'Israël internationalement reconnu et les territoires occupés. Monsieur le Président, la priorité aujourd'hui est l'arrêt immédiat des mesures unilatérales. L'accélération de la colonisation compromet la possibilité d'établir un État palestinien viable et contigu. Ces mesures mettent en danger la perspective d'une solution à deux États, l'autre Jérusalem comme capitale. Nous appelons donc à éviter toute mesure qui conduirait à un embrasement de la situation à Jérusalem et en Cisjordanie. Le statu quo historique sur les lieux saints à Jérusalem doit être préservé. Monsieur le Président, il faut poser d'urgence les bases d'un règlement politique durable pour mettre en œuvre la solution des deux États, Israël et la Palestine, ayant tous deux Jérusalem pour capitale. Cette solution est la seule qui puisse assurer aux Israéliens et aux Palestiniens la paix et la sécurité à laquelle ils aspirent. La France réaffirme son attachement à la sécurité d'Israël et à l'édification d'un État pour les Palestiniens. Et l'autorité palestinienne a un rôle central à jouer dans ce processus en Cisjordanie, comme à Gaza, dont l'avenir ne peut se jouer que dans le cadre d'un État palestinien unifié. La France est activement mobilisée en ce sens auprès des partis et avec l'ensemble des partis internationaux. Elle proposera dans les prochains jours une initiative au Conseil de sécurité. Je vous remercie. Je remercie les représentants de la France pour leur statement. Je donne la parole à la représentante de la Suisse. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je voudrais Thank commencer you. par remercier yes. aussi like le coordinateur spécial Thor Venesland de sa présentation. Je souhaite avant tout saluer l'adoption lundi 25 mars de la résolution 2728 qui, je cite, exige un cessez-le-feu humanitaire immédiat pendant le mois du Ramadan qui soit respecté par toutes les parties et même un cessez-le-feu durable à Gaza. Hier, il était grand temps de restaurer la confiance de la communauté internationale en la capacité d'action de ce Conseil en matière de paix Aujourd'hui, il est temps de veiller à la mise en œuvre de cette résolution par les conflits Le cessez-le-feu immédiat doit sans délai déboucher sur un cessez-le-feu durable tel que par Dans le même temps et dès à présent, les efforts de paix doivent être intensifiés. La résolution 27-28 repose sur le le respect par les parties de leurs obligations de droits internationaux, y compris des droits humains et du droit international Parmi elles figurent les mesures concrètes pour protéger la population civile, faciliter l'acheminement rapide sur et sans entrave de et assurer le traitement humain des personnes hors de combat. Personnes privées de liberté, blessées ou malades. Les unités sanitaires comme les hôpitaux doivent être protégées et respectées. Elles ne doivent pas faire l'objet d'attaques ou être utilisées en dehors de leurs fonctions humanitaires pour commettre des actes nuisibles à l'ennemi. Dès le 7 octobre, nous avons condamné les actes de terreur du Hamas et les violences à caractère sexuel qui les ont accompagnés aussi fermement que nous avons demandé la libération immédiate et inconditionnelle leur capture et leur maintien en captivité contreviennent aussi au droit international, comme le rappelle la résolution 27. Monsieur le Président, la situation en Cisjordanie nous rappelle que le non-respect des résolutions de ce Conseil a de lourdes conséquences pour la paix. Comme le dit la résolution 2334, les colonies israéliennes sont, je cite, un obstacle majeur à la réalisation de la solution de deux États et à l'instauration d'une paix globale juste et durable. Ils sont illégales au regard du droit international humanitaire. Les annonces récentes de dirigeants israéliens continuent de miner une recherche de paix. À ce titre, nous condamnons l'annonce de confiscation de 800 hectares de terre occupée. Dans notre exposé à la Cour internationale de justice, dans le cadre de l'avis 
consultatif relatif aux conséquences juridiques de l'occupation israélienne. Nous avons dit que, je cite, « Les mesures prises par Israël dans le territoire palestinien occupé entraînent des changements fondamentaux, notamment démographiques, pouvant endosser un caractère permanent, ce qui va à l'encontre des principes régissant le droit de l'occupation. » L'absence de protection des civils face aux attaques, menaces et intimidations des colons est particulièrement alarmante. Ces violences atteignent des niveaux records ces dernières années. Ces niveaux ont encore été dépassés depuis le 7 octobre, selon ce qui nous dit le coordinateur spécial. La Suisse condamne ces attaques qui, avec la construction de colonies, which, together with the construction of settlements, contribute to the creation of coercive environment and lead to the forced displacement of Palestinian communities. Nous prenons note du travail des autorités compétentes visant à minimiser les tensions tensions autour des lieux saints pendant le Ramadan. Nous appelons à respecter le statu quo sur le Haram al-Sharif Temple Mount et le rôle de gardien exercé par la Jordanie. La Suisse reste convaincue que la solution à deux États, conformément aux droits internationaux et aux paramètres convenus au niveau international, est la seule fondation possible pour que tant Israéliens et Palestiniens puissent vivre durablement en paix, en sécurité et dignité. La mise en œuvre des résolutions de ce Conseil, notamment la 23, Notably, 2334 et 2738 est indispensable à cette fin. Je remercie. Je remercie le représentant de la République de Corée. Merci, M. le Président. Je remercie le spécial coordinateur de Thor Wenzeland pour la situation de la situation de la situation en Palestine not only in Gaza, but also in the West Bank. For more than 160 days, ongoing hostilities have devastated the lives of all the ordinary civilians in Gaza. However, with the adoption of Resolution 2728 yesterday by this Council, we are finally witnessing a glimmer of hope. The adoption of this resolution must ensure that a turning point is made in breaking the continuing vicious circle. To this end, as demanded in Resolution 2728, an immediate ceasefire during Ramadan, leading to a lasting sustainable ceasefire, should be implemented. And all remaining hostages taken by Hamas and other groups should be immediately and unconditionally released. All barriers to the provision of humanitarian assistance should also be lifted. We strongly urge direct parties to the conflict to scrupulously abide by the right and just demands of this Council. In addition, the international community should exert its, uh, its utmost efforts to expand the humanitarian aid at scale. As I emphasized yesterday, the situation on the ground in Gaza must be different before and after this resolution. Mr. President, Palestinians belong to their land. Any attempt to relocate Palestinians outside Palestine is unacceptable. Resolution 23 provides that Israel, as the occupying power, must abide by its legal obligations and responsibilities under the Geneva Convention relative to the protection of civilians. This resolution also condemns all measures aimed at altering the demographic composition, character, and the status of the Palestinian territory, including the demolition of homes and the displacement of Palestinian civilians. Repeating provocative rhetoric by Israeli ministers, including calls for population transfer and resettlement in Gaza, is unacceptable. Plans for the establishment of so-called buffer zones inside the Gaza Strip should not be carried out. The possible ground operation in Rafah must not be realized, as this will lead to enormous civilian fatalities as well as mass displacement. The situation in the West Bank is also increasingly alarming. Last year was the deadliest year for civilians in the West Bank, including 124 child fatalities. 
We are appalled by Israel's approval this month of plans for more than 3,400 new homes in settlements, as well as land for additional settlements in the West Bank. Ongoing attacks against Palestinians by Israeli extremist settlers and the demolition of Palestinian homes by Israeli security forces are all the more disturbing because they are taking place in an environment of near total impunity. Let's be specific. As clearly articulated in Resolution 2334, settlements in the occupied territory have no legal validity and constitute a flagrant violation under international law. These activities must cease immediately. Israel must implement measures to prevent all acts of settler violence against Palestinian civilians, and the perpetrators must be held accountable. Mr. President, the establishment of settlements in Palestinian territory, which jeopardize peace in the short term and the realization of a two-state solution in the long term, is unjustifiable, illegal, and invalid. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Republic of Korea for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of Malta. Thank you, President. I also thank Special Coordinator Wenesland for his report. Regrettably, each update on the implementation of this resolution depicts an even more grim picture of the situation in the occupied Palestinian territory. The conflict in Gaza has had a catastrophic impact on civilians. Yesterday's important adoption of a ceasefire resolution was a vital step towards alleviating this terrible plight. However, as we have heard from the Special Coordinator's briefing today, the West Bank is not impervious to the dire repercussions of this war. Rising pressures from continued illegal settlement activity, the violence intensified Israeli security forces operations and the Palestinian Authority's fiscal and economic insecurity pushed the region into further instability. Malta's position is clear. Settlements are illegal under international law. They are an obstacle to peace and threaten the viability of a two-state solution. We therefore condemn Israel's recent announcement that over 800 hectares of land in the occupied West Bank have been declared as state lands. Malta stresses its repeated calls on Israel to abide by its obligations under international law. We firmly reject Israel's policy and actions advancing illegal settlements in the occupied West Bank, including East Jerusalem. Such acts must not be allowed to take place with impunity. We welcome ongoing towards the realization of a reinforced and revitalized Palestinian Authority, which has allowed effective governance in line with the two-state solution and with Gaza as part of an independent Palestinian state. The international community must offer its support to such actions. President, Malta has repeatedly and strongly condemned the horrendous Hamas terror attack of 7 October, including acts of sexual violence committed and rockets fired at Israeli population centers. We reiterate our call on Hamas to unconditionally release all remaining hostages. However, the humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza also demands our urgent attention. There could not be a stronger indictment of incitement, indictment, sorry, of our failure to put an end to this tragedy than the harrowing images of Gazan children suffering. There is an urgent need for an immediate and permanent ceasefire. The Council's adoption of Resolution 2728 is a step in this direction. Only a ceasefire will permit the conditions necessary to properly alleviate these catastrophic conditions. In the words of the Secretary General, it is time to truly flood Gaza with life-saving aid. The choice is clear, either surge or starvation. 
In this regard, we also avail ourselves of this opportunity to reiterate our full support to the Secretary General. We greatly appreciate his strong leadership and principled approach during this crisis. Malta stresses that all parties are obliged to comply with international humanitarian law. Israel must allow for the unimpeded safe delivery of humanitarian aid, including of all barriers to the provision of humanitarian assistance at scale. Actions it, actions it has failed to undertake so far. We also call for the immediate and full implementation of the order on provisional measures issued by the ICJ on 26 January. We further stress our firm rejection of any ground offensive into Rafa. Any such action will inevitably lead to increased human suffering and casualties. UNRWA's role as a stabilizing entity for the future of Gaza also cannot be underestimated. The international community must continue to ensure it is appropriately funded. UNRWA's collapse would have devastating consequences on the entire region. In conclusion, President, Malta stresses that now, more than ever, there is a pressing need to relaunch peace negotiations for a just and comprehensive resolution of the conflict. We stand ready to support any initiatives towards this end, including in this Council. Malta reaffirms its commitment to a political solution based on a two-state solution along the pre-1967 borders, addressing the legitimate aspirations of both sides with Jerusalem as the future capital of two states, living in peace and security, in line with the relevant Security Council resolutions and internationally agreed parameters. Thank you. Thank the representative of Marta for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of Sierra Leone. Mr. President, thank you for convening this meeting to receive briefing from Special Coordinator to our Wellness Land, which is really pertinent to our work. I thank Special Coordinator Wellness Land for his valuable and detailed briefing. For months, the UN Security Council has been consistently interacting to debate and exchange ideas and proposals on how to address the tragic, tragic situation in the Gaza Strip the tensions in the West Bank and the wider region, including the effort towards achieving a ceasefire in Gaza and the unconditional release of hostages and detainees. Though it was long overdue, yesterday, in line with the UN Charter mandate, as a council, to Resolution 2728, we were for the first time able to demand an immediate ceasefire for the month of Ramadan in Gaza, which must lead to a lasting sustainable ceasefire. This was achieved with the unity and leadership of the elected 10 members of the Council in Copenhagen Resolution 2728 and with the important co cooperation of the permanent members. This unity of purpose and collective action is needed to ensure the binding resolution 2728 parties and implemented by Israel and Hamas. During this holy month of Ramadan, the adoption of Resolution 2728 means the bombardment and rocket shelling from both sides must stop. The air strikes like the one yesterday in Rafa with fatalities must stop. As my delegation indicated yesterday, the fighting, killing, suffering, and collective punishment must end. The parties to the conflict are under obligation to respect the clear demands of the Security Council. And we urge them to fully implement resolutions 2712, 2720, and 2728 adopted by this council since the start of the Gaza conflict. States with influence are once again urged to apply the necessary pressure on the parties to implement these resolutions. It is worth noting that the UN General Assembly, through adoption of resolutions ES 1021, ES 1022, the Secretary General's in invocation of Article 99 of the UN Charter and the International Court of Justice indication of provisional measures in its 26 January 2024 order in the application of the punishment of the crime of genocide in the Gaza Strip, South Africa versus Israel, all speak to the imperative for an immediate ceasefire 
respected by all parties, the immediate and unconditional release of all hostages and detainees, the urgent need to expand the flow of humanitarian assistance to and reinforce the protection of civilians in the entire Gaza Strip. Mr. President, Sierra Leone wants to be clear and unequivocal. Resolution 2728 is binding on the parties and on all member states of the United Nations. Article 25 of the UN Charter and the advisory opinion of the International Court of Justice in legal consequences for states of the continued presence of South Africa in Namibia, Southwest Africa, notwithstanding Security Council res Resolution 276, provide let us therefore build on the impetus created to ensure compliance with international law. Our actions must be driven by the many civilian lives lost in their homes, in hospitals, in trying to secure a loaf of bread or the babies who suffocated due to the lack of oxygen. The narrative for the past five months has been tragic and shocking with deadly consequences for Palestinians and Israelis. This has been confirmed with updates received from Special Coordinator Wenesland. Nevertheless, we must be hopeful and resolute that there is a way out if we're willing to work collaboratively with unity of purpose, setting aside preconceived ideas that will hinder progress. To achieve this, my delegation hereby recommends the following. Firstly, we call on all parties to the conflict to give their unconditional support and implement the provisions of Resolutions 2728. Though the expectations are different, as an immediate action, the major goals has been to save lives, improve the humanitarian situation, curtail displaced widows unjustly held as hostages and detainees. We strongly underscore the nature of Security Council resolutions, and non-compliance by any party would be a breach of international law, especially when such an action are a threat to international peace and security. Secondly, as members of the Security Council, we have acknowledged and expressed support for the complementary diplomatic efforts of Egypt, Qatar, and the United States in the ongoing negotiations for a deal that will lay the foundation for durable peace in Gaza and guarantee the protection of all civilians and civilian objects. Thirdly, and regarding the West Bank and East Jerusalem, we recall Resolution 2334 and reiterate the call for the cessation of all settlement activities that obstructs the historical layout and eliminates features that, endorses, features that endorse the two-state solution. We further call on Israel, the occupying power, to refrain from policies and actions that will ignite tensions and further escalate the fragile situation in the West Bank. Fourthly, and to maintain regional peace and stability, we call on all actors within the region to adhere to and respect provisions of relevant Security Council resolutions exercise restraint and avoid inflammatory rhetoric that will obstruct the path to lasting peace. Before I close, let me take this opportunity to reiterate Sierra Leone's support for the UN Secretary General and commend the tireless and sacrifice work of the UN personnel working through the conflict in the Gaza Strait. We equally restate our strong support for UNRWA and other humanitarian agencies. In conclusion, Mr. President, Sierra Leone reiterates our call and support for the which is worth reminding, with Israel and Palestine living side by side in peace, security, and stability in the not too distant future. I thank you. I thank the representative of Sierra Leone for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of Russian Federation. <coughs> Mr. President, I'd like to begin today with a number of quotes. Yesterday, in this chamber, the permanent representative of the United States, commenting on the Council's adoption of Resolution 2728, stated, and I quote, we fully support some of the critical objectives in this non-binding resolution. Slightly later, the spokesperson of the U.S. National Security Council, John Kirby, said, and I quote, it's a non-binding resolution, so there is no impact at all on Israel's ability to continue to go after Hamas. 
After the Security Council adopted Resolution 2728, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Israel, Israel Katz, said that Israel would not end the military operation and intended to fight until they destroyed the Hamas movement and returned all of the hostages kidnapped and being detained in the enclave. I would like to put a question to the U.S. delegation. Do the statements by PR Thomas Greenfield and other officials mean that the USA does not consider Security Council resolutions to be binding for the implementation by member states? And I'll provide another quote, this time from Article 25 of the UN Charter. The members of the United Nations agree to accept and carry out the decisions of the Security Council in accordance with the present Charter. Do the statements yesterday by PR Thomas Greenfield mean that the USA no longer considers itself to be bound by the provisions of the UN Charter and, moreover, is encouraging Israel to the same? If that is the case, then there is no point in our discussions in the chamber at all. One of the permanent members of the Security Council has essentially openly stated that it does not accept the Charter of our organization, disavowing the uh, hard-won fruits of discussions in the Council, and including the hard-won and historic resolution on a ceasefire in Gaza. With the place, Israel now, despite a direct demand from the Security Council, has complete carte blanche and is not planning to stop uh, until it raises Gaza to the ground. Mr. President, we listened closely to the report by the Special Coordinator for the Middle East Peace Process, Tor Venesland, on the situation in the occupied Palestinian territory, including the Gaza Strip and the West Bank, where the military operation and armed raids by the Israeli armed forces are continuing, despite Security Council Resolution 2728, which was adopted yesterday, with an unambiguous demand for an immediate ceasefire for the month of Ramadan, respected by all parties and leading to a lasting, sustainable ceasefire. I remind you that the resolution was supported by all members of the Council, with the exception of the United States delegation, which preferred to abstain. Washington needed 173 days and nights since the beginning of the unprecedented in the Gaza Strip, the victims of which are, are more than 32,000 people killed and around 75,000 wounded Palestinians, in order to realize the harmfulness of their position and allow the members of the Council to, at long last, adopt the only right decision. And in general, in the statements of the U.S. representative uh, were, were stunning. He didn't say anything uh, about the agenda of today's meeting, namely the illegal settlement building by Israel in the West Bank of the Jordan River, and spent all of his efforts on justifying to Israel yesterday's decision to not block the Council's decision calling for a ceasefire. Quite frankly, it is not worthy of a great power. We were particularly surprised by attempts to besmirch Russia and China, thanks to whom the Council was able to adopt yesterday's resolution um, rather than the vague and harmful U.S. text giving Israel a license to continue its operations in Gaza. And lastly, once again, I would remind you, the American colleagues, that you, on the 18th of October, who prevented the Council from condemning Hamas by blocking a resolution with a demand for that, so you need to, you only have yourselves to blame. In the last 24 hours in the enclave, 81 people have died as a result of ground operations and airstrikes by the IDF. Hostilities are continuing, including around the Shifa and NASA medical complexes. Because of the intensiveness of the shelling, the Palestinian Red Crescent was forced to evacuate all patients that are able to be moved from the al Amal hospital. Given the continuing bombing, appropriate and unhindered humanitarian access is practically absent. 
The threat of mass hunger hangs over the enclave since 80% of Gazans are deprived of a reliable source of food and they also face non-communicable diseases. The already cuts being exacerbated even further in light of Israel's announced transition to ground operations in the area of Rafah, where more than um, 1.5 million people have gathered. And the eve of today's meeting, addressing service personnel, Prime Minister Netanyahu once again confirmed his intention to carry out an invasion of Rafah. Mr. President, we support the activities of UNRWA and we are concerned by reports that we've heard today about the Israeli authorities prohibiting UNRWA's access to the north of Gaza. Against the backdrop of the bloody clearing by Israel of the Gaza Strip and unabating tensions that continue in the West Bank, where this entire time equally fierce clashes between Israeli soldiers and extremist-minded settlers with uh, Palestinian uh, civilians have continued. According to UN data, since the 7th of October 2023, in the West Bank, including East Jerusalem, Israeli soldiers and settlers have killed around 450 Palestinians, including more than 100 children. In addition to the use of force, Israel is continuing arbitrary arrests of Palestinians. Since the 7th of October, more than 7,500 people have been detained, as well as unilateral steps to create irreversible facts on the ground and to expand Israeli settlements, including including the construction of settler outposts west of Ramallah in violation of the provisions of Security Council Resolution 2334. The authorities of West Jerusalem expropriated around 800 hectares of land in the Jordan River Valley. This is the largest confiscation of Palestinian land since 1993. Moreover, the Israelis approved the construction of more than 3,500 newly settlements of Mala Adumin and in parallel, the forced confiscation of Palestinian property and the demolishment of their homes continues. Mr. President, given the approaching religious holidays, um, Catholic Easter on the 31st of March and Eid al-Fitr on the 9th of April, there is an acute issue of access to holy places in Jerusalem. It is outrageous that the Israeli security forces have not allowed thousands of Christians from the West Bank to visit holiday services for the Catholic Catholic Palm Sunday in Jerusalem. In that regard, we call on the authorities in Tel Aviv to review their approach and to ensure unhindered access to um, places of religious significance in the old city. Another problem, another final status problem that the Israeli leadership is trying to uh, irreversibly remove from the agenda is the return of refugees. The relevant agency to support Palestinians created in 1949, not just in the OPT, but also in neighboring Arab countries, UNRWA, has been subjected to targeted and comprehensive attacks in the form of undermining its financing and political mandate. In that regard, we have questions not only over the disproportionality of the measures taken in respect of UNRWA, which are essentially leading to the collective punishment of 30,000 agency staff members and 6 million Palestinians that fall under its care, but also the absence of concrete information about the facts of the allegations made by Israel of the agency staff members' involvement in the events of the 7th of October. At the same time, we also have to be concerned by information coming in about torture and cruel treatment during the questioning of UNWA staff in order to get confessions. Mr. President, the terrible trends that I have described as a result of Israel fully ignoring its obligations to implement the provisions of Security Council and General Assembly resolutions is a threat not just that could bring an expansion of the scale of human and the humanitarian catastrophe in the occupied Palestinian territory, but could also spread the escalation of violence to the entire Middle East region. We trust that Resolution 2728 of the Security Council will be implemented in full by all parties and members of the UN and facilitate, facilitate an end to the violence in Gaza, including preventing the Israeli operation in Rafah, intensifying humanitarian assistance to civilians in the, in the Strip and preventing their forced deportation, rather than remaining a dead letter like its predecessors did.
Our duty as the Security Council is to monitor its direct observance and implementation of its provisions on the ground. Thank you. I thank the representative of the Russian Federation for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of Algeria. Thank you, Mr. President. At the outset, I express my gratitude to Mr. Thor Winnesland for his briefing and reaffirm Algeria's commitment and unswearing support for him. In my statement, by reaffirming Algeria's steadfast support for the UN Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, in the face of the smearing campaigns targeting him. It is unfair. Efforts to conceal the truth will never prevail, as the global public opinion is fully cognizant on the on ongoing realities. History will not be forgiving toward the occupying power in Palestine. Mr. President, as the meeting progress and the briefing echoes similar themes, it is painfully clear that the Palestinian people still enduring and ever intensifying under Israeli occupation. For more than 75 years, each passing day, even each hour, witnesses an escalation in their suffering as the occupation expands its reach, its violence, its crimes. The latest aggression against Gaza marks yet another chapter in a long history of blatant and systematic isolation, violation of the right of the Palestinian people. This brutal military campaign aims to erode the prospects of establishing a viable Palestinian state, rendering the hope of such a state nearly impossible to attain. The cruel onslaught in Gaza he has unleashed a killing that targets anyone, anyone daring to move beyond the confines. The toll is staggering. With over 32,000 lives lost in Gaza. Additionally, more than 74 individuals, women, children and men have been left maimed. 12,000 of them were disabled. Shockingly, the number of children killed in Gaza, killed in Gaza, surpasses the total count of children lost in all global conflicts over four years. This is an assault on children. This is an assault on innocence. This is an assault on the very future and existence of the Palestinian people in their homeland. The crimes perpetrated by the occupation forces have breached all imaginable boundaries of decency. The resolution 2728 that we have adopted yesterday must 
be fully implemented. The UN Charter is clear. Security Council resolutions are binding. Not almost, not partly, nor maybe. International peace and security are highly serious matter to be addressed lightly. If not, if not, the very existence of this body, the Security Council, is put to question. Mr. President, must stop now. Urgent action is imperative to expedite humanitarian relief effort before the specter of famine materializes, as predicted by the latest IPC reports forecasting famine by this month of May. In this regard, we condemn the decision of the occupying power to not allow UNRWA convoys to enter the north of Gaza. This is a war by starvation. And we have the tool to avoid this catastrophe. It is UNRWA. UNRWA, who is the blackboard of the humanitarian action on Ga in Gaza, UNRWA is irreplaceable. Mr. President, amidst this grim reality and the world's focus on unfolding crisis in Gaza, the occupying power have boldly actioned sanctioned the action the expansion of settlement in the occupied territory despite the international consensus on their illegality this settlement continues they are bargaining monthly while our Security Council struggles to enforce the implementation of Resolution 234, resolution voted eight years ago. This resolution clearly denounces this settlement as a blatant, blatant violation of international law and the significant impediment to the establishment of a Palestinian state. The settlers' community has quadrupled since the 90s, reaching more than 950,000. Indeed, it is legitimate now to question the fate of these newcomers to Palestinian territories. And how the envisioned Palestinian state will take shape amidst the ongoing settlement expansions and demographic modification. This expansionist agenda is a clear blueprint aimed at, uh, at altering the demographic landscape and character of the occupied territory. This unlawful presence has ushered a new era characterized by escalating settler terror violence, which the occupation authorities are complicit, are complicit in arming, in violent, flagrant violation 904. Palestinians in the West Bank 
and also in Al-Quds Sharif, live in constant fear, unable to safeguard themselves and their properties from settlers' gangs, shielded by the occupation forces. The year 2023, even prior to October 7, marked the most violent bloodshed period for Palestinians since the Second Intifada. The Security Council must urgently explore avenues to ensure the full implementation of Resolution 23 before the vision of a Palestinian statehood is shattered by the steadfast grip of settler and settlement. In conclusion, Mr. President, we reiterate our standing support and commitment to collaborate with all stakeholders to safeguard the Palestinian people's right and enable them to exercise their legitimate right to self-determination and to establish an independent Palestinian state with Jerusalem as its capital. I thank you. I thank the representative of Algeria for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of Slovenia. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Um, I also want uh, to thank profoundly Special Coordinator uh, for his comprehensive, comprehensive briefing today. Um, almost six months into the Gaza conflict, um, precedented and famine is looming. So we welcome yesterday's adoption of the Security Council Resolution 2728, and we urge its swift implementation. We would like to voice our profound concern over the denial of UNRWA food convoys to the north of Gaza, and we call on Israel to reverse its decision. Let me repeat here again that we condemned and we continue to condemn the terrorist attacks by Hamas on the 7th of October and its taking and holding hostages. However, there is no right to self-defense justifying the starving of civilian population and neither killing and destruction that we are witnessing in Gaza. Wars have rules and they need to be respected. We are concerned over the increasingly confrontational statements and actions of Israeli officials toward the Secretary General of the UN, toward the United Nations and its agencies. We are the United Nations, and Slovenia stands with the UN Secretary. With our eyes on Gaza, we must, we must not forget about the West Bank, including East Jerusalem. So today I would like to focus on situation there. Firstly, Slovenia repeats that establishment of settlements in the occupied Palestinian territory has no legal validity and constitutes a violation under international law. It is particularly concerning that practices and policies of the current government of Israel appear to be unprecedentedly aligned with the goals of Israeli settler, settler movement aiming to expand long-term control over the West Bank and steadily integrate the territory in State of Israel, proof being the recent approvals for advancing new housing units, regularizations of settler outposts, and confiscation of land. We expect Israel to reverse these decisions. Moreover, Slovenia will to hold the continuing practice of eviction and demolition orders against Palestinians which disproportionately affects Palestinian women and girls. We are appalled by the recent incidents involving settlers and activists building symbolic outposts in Gaza. We reject any attempt to territorial or demographic change in Gaza. 
including forced displacement. Such actions contravene international law, and we expect a democratic state to respect the rule of law, including the rule of international law. Secondly, we are alarmed by the dramatically accelerated trend of the settler violence, state violence, and the displacement of Palestinians in the West Bank, in particular following the 7th of October attacks. We are concerned that settler violence seems to be further accelerated by the collaboration of Israeli security forces and even of some senior ministers of the government. This is accelerating the displacement of Palestinians from their land in circumstances that they may amount to forcible transfer, which is a war crime, as observed by the High Commissioner for Human Rights. We welcome that as an unparalleled step the EU will be imposing sanctions on violent settlers. We are also alarmed by the increase of the use of disproportionate force by Israeli security forces, the number of raids and of severe restrictions of movement. We are concerned over the dramatic growth in the number of Palestinians arrested and detained in the recent months. The ICRC must be notified of and allowed to visit Palestinians in Israeli detention. We urge for full cooperation of all parties with relevant international bodies. Thirdly, settlement expansion and violence are a major obstacle to the achievement of the two-state solution and a just, lasting and comprehensive peace. We therefore support intensification and acceleration of all international and regional diplomatic efforts and support aimed at achieving a comprehensive and lasting peace and a two-state solution. We welcome the appointment of the new Prime Minister of the Palestinian Authority, which we hope might be an additional impetus to the political process. Mr. President, colleagues, as a cradle of religions, the region is in the midst of numerous celebrations, which, should, which could provide an opportunity for reflection and understanding. We express our grave concern over the current situation in the Gaza Strip, the West Bank, and the more broadly in the region. However, we also hope that this is a turning point. If the current devastation can serve for something good, it should be a strong commitment by all of us to a pathway of peace and understanding, starting with the implementation of Secu Security Council Resolution 2728. Thank you. I thank the representative of the Mint. I give the floor to the representative of China. Mr. President. I thank Special Coordinator Winners Land for his briefing. Yesterday, the Council, with 14 votes in favor and one vote in abstention, adopted Resolution 2728, demanding an immediate ceasefire in Gaza for the month of Ramadan, leading to a lasting, sustainable ceasefire. The U.S., after blocking Council's effective action on multiple occasions finally decided yesterday not to veto single-handedly Council decision. This should deserve our recognition. However, its significance was offset by a series of statements and behavior of the U.S. after the vote. This makes us question the political U.S. I wish to emphasize that Council resolutions are binding, including Resolution 2728. This is beyond any doubt or challenge. Every country joins the UN with a commitment to implement Council's decisions. This is an obligation under the UN Charter. As a permanent member of the Security Council, the US should take the lead in its implementation. We urge Israel to effectively comply with the demands of the Council Resolution and cease its military offensive against Gaza and its collective punishment of the population in Gaza. We call on the U.S. to play a constructive role exerting positive influence on Israel using all effective means to support the implementation of the resolution. Mr. 
More than 170 days have passed since the outbreak of the conflict in Gaza. The humanitarian catastrophe is beyond imagination, with millions of people in famine and struggling on the verge of death. The blockade of Gaza and the man-made barriers to humanitarian access must be lifted without delay. We urge Israel to fully open the Rafah crossing and all other land crossings to ensure sufficient, safe, and a speedy access of humanitarian goods into Gaza. The UN have made tremendous efforts to promote a ceasefire in Gaza and to alleviate the humanitarian disaster there. China fully supports the work of the SG and the UN and firmly opposes malicious attacks against the SG and the organization. UNRWA is playing an indispensable and crucial role in easing the humanitarian situation in Gaza. We urge Israel to immediately lift its restrictions on UNRWA's relief operations and call on those countries that have not yet resumed their funding to UNRWA to do so as soon as possible. Mr. President, while the conflict in Gaza continues, the situation in the West Bank is becoming increasingly tense by the IDF and the settlers in the West Bank has intensified, resulting in massive casualties among the Palestinians. We call for an effective curb on settler violence and for a thorough investigation into relevant incidents with accountability. For Muslims, Ramadan is the most sacred and important time. China urges Israel to guarantee the right of Muslims to visit Al-Aqsa Mosque and to effectively maintain peace and tranquility of the holy sites. Israeli settlement activities in the West Bank constitute a serious violation of international law and the Security Council Resolution 2334 and erode the basis of the two-state solution. Israel continues to advance its settlement activities. China condemns this and also condemns its recent announcement of new plans for large-scale expansion. Mr. President, the crux of the protract lies in the failure to implement the two-state solution and the long-standing disregard for the Palestinians' rights to statehood, survival, and return. The current round of the Gaza conflict reminds us once again that we can no longer continue to ignore the fact that Palestine has been under occupation for a long time, nor can we continue to evade the long-cherished aspiration of the Palestinians to establish an independent state. China calls for greater international and regional diplomatic efforts to reshape a credible multilateral process and to revitalize the political prospects for the two-state solution. We advocate the convening of a larger scale, more authoritative, and a more effective international peace conference to formulate a timetable and a roadmap for the implementation of the two-state two solution for Palestine in becoming a full member of the UN as soon as possible. And we hope the Council will put this issue on its agenda in the near future. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of China for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of Mozambique. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, Mozambique welcomes the, this regular briefing convened by Japan's uh, presidency on the implementation of Resolution 2334 on the Middle East, including the Palestinian question. We express our uh, Tor Wensland, special coordinator for the Middle East peace process, for his comprehensive briefing and his tireless dedication, especially during this challenging NATO for the Middle East peace process, for his comprehensive briefing and his tireless dedication, especially during these challenging times as he continues striving for peace in the Middle East. Mr. President, uh, the situation in the Middle East remains highly sensitive with ongoing conflict and humanitarian challenges. Commitment to addressing these complex issues and striving for positive change. Yesterday's adoption of the Security Council Resolution 2728 reflects the concern of all 15 Council members regarding the situation in the Gaza Strip. Confirms our co total commitment to, to making every effort toward 
an immediate ceasefire during the month of Ramadan. The goal is to achieve a lasting and sustainable ceasefire. We have faith that the resolution adopted yesterday, along with previous resolution, will be implemented by all parties. This, hopefully, should ease the long suffering of the population in Gaza, as well as releasing of hostages and increase the quantity and quality of humanitarian aid. The Council underscored the urgency of ending civilian suffering infant lives is uh, the singular priority. Let us hope that this resolution leads to a positive change and relief of the affected population in Gaza. Mozambique reaffirms its commitment to actively participate in diplomatic efforts aimed at fostering peace in the region. Our engagement is guided by the principles outlined in the Madrid Terms of Reference, which underpin relevant United Nations resolutions. We acknowledge the significance of the Arab Peace Initiative and the ongoing negotiation involving Qatar, significance of the Arab Peace Initiative and the ongoing negotiation involving Qatar, Egypt and the US toward achieving lasting peace. We also echo the view that the ongoing establishment of settlements in the, Palestine, the Palestinian territory is a violation under the international law including the relevant UN Security Council and the General Assembly resolutions. Therefore, we call the occupying, uh, occupying uh, power to seize all settlement activities since they are a major obstacle to a lasting peace. In concluding, Mr. President, Mozambique emphasized the vital importance and urgency of a two-state solution in the Middle East. This is fundamental as it envisages Israel and Palestine coexistence as democratic states, living side by side in peace with a secure and recognized borders. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Mozambique for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of Ecuador. Thank you very much, In President. Lugar, At the outset, I echo the gratitude to Special Coordinator Tor Wenesland for his briefing this morning, and I reiterate Ecuador's support for his work and that of all of the personnel of the United Nations and its agencies. Just 24 hours ago, the Security Council adopted a resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire during the month of Ramadan and the unconditional immediate release of those hostages who are still held by Hamas. The provisions of Resolution 2728 must be implemented fully and immediately, as must those of Resolutions 2712 and 2720, so as to alleviate the situation faced by the civilian population in Gaza, to allow the hostages to reunite with their families and for steps to be taken towards a permanent resolution to this conflict. The urgent and adequate provision of humanitarian aid must be our top priority. It is imperative to avoid a worsening of the food situation in the Gaza Strip, and it is unacceptable that new obstacles be set in the way of the entry or distribution of food. Ecuador Ecuador once again condemns the execrable terrorist acts perpetrated by Hamas on the 7th of October last year. The explosion of violence which, has since, which we have since witnessed has had devastating consequences, and not only in Gaza, but in the whole of the region. As I have said, each time that Coordinator Wenesland presents his briefings, it is natural to focus attention on Gaza, but we must not forget what's happening in the West Bank. There, the violence is continuing, as is settlement activity. Last week, it transpired that Israel has declared 800 hectares in the Jordan Valley to be state land. Described this, and I quote, as the largest confiscation of land since the Oslo Accords of 1993. End of quote. 
en línea My con country, la declaración de la presidencia de este Consejo de febrero del 2023, se opone enérgicamente a todas las medidas unilaterales que obstaculizan la paz, como la construcción y expansión de los asentamientos, la confiscación de tierras, la pretendida legalización de los asentamientos avanzados, la demolición de viviendas y el desplazamiento de civiles. Señor presidente, para concluir, Cierro esta intervención reiterando like la convicción de mi país de que es más urgente que nunca avanzar hacia una solución pacífica, definitiva y justa para las partes, con la existencia de dos estados, Palestina e Israel, sobre la base de la frontera y de las resoluciones relevantes. Muchas gracias. I thank the representative of Ecuador for their statement. I shall now make a statement in my capacity as a representative of Japan. I thank Special Coordinator Venezland for sharing his variable and comprehensive updates. As we approach the passing of six months of the conflict in Gaza, we can only observe the destruction and the devastation that have resulted since Hamas's horrifying acts of terror in Israel took place. We once again unequivocally condemn Hamas for their heinous terrorist acts. Colleagues, intense Israeli air attacks and ground operations have created an unprecedented humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza. With reports of over 32,000 fatalities and nearly 2 million displaced persons, an immediate ceasefire is desperately needed to save lives and alleviate the suffering in both Israel and Palestine. Japan is pleased that yesterday the Security Council was finally able to adopt that resolution, which should lead to a ceasefire for the holy month. We urge the concerned, concerned parties to immediately act in good faith based on this resolution, and we continue to support the ongoing diplomatic efforts led by the United States, Egypt, Qatar, towards the immediate cessation of hostilities and release of hostages. Japan is deeply concerned about the regional spillover of the conflict. In this pain, a military offensive into Rafah would be catastrophic, not only for Gaza, but across the region, and therefore it should not be proceeded under any circumstances. We deplore the Israeli government's recent plans to seize hundreds of acres of land in the occupied West Bank. Israeli settlement activities violate international law, and we call on Israel to immediately seize such actions as well as other unilateral actions such as a set such as a settler, settler viol violence and forcible displacement of Palestinians. To conclude, Resolution 27-28 illuminates a ray of hope for peace, security, and stability in the Middle East. A two-state resolution where Israel and the independent Palestine side by side in peaceful coexistence continues to be the most viable path towards achieving a sustainable peace in this decades-long conflict. Japan will continue to work constructively with other Council members to that end. I resume my function as President of the Council. There are, there are no more names inscribed on this list, list of speakers. The meeting is adjourned.